We begin this hour with 60 Minutes correspondent Anderson Cooper and his new book about the Astros, a family that once had unlimited wealth, power, and ambition. The Astor family story begins in 1780s, when John Jacob Astor turned his fur trade into a real estate empire and became America's first multimillionaire. The family reached the height of its influence during the Gilded Age, when Caroline Astor created the 400 and reinvented social hierarchies in the 1880s. The family's clout ended with philanthropist Brooke Astor's death in 2007. It was overshadowed by her son's conviction for swindling millions from her estate. Cooper details the family saga in Astor, the rise and fall of an American fortune. And Anderson Cooper, our good friend, joins us this morning. Good morning. Yay. Thanks, nice to be here. Hello, good morning. friend. Yes. Uh, so, Anderson, you wrote about your family, the rise and fall of your own family, the Vanderbilt, a couple of years ago. Why were you so interested in telling the story of the Astors? And we know that these families sort of crisscrossed each other. Yes. Uh, yeah, they, they were, I mean, there was a big competition between uh, Caroline Astor and, uh, and the Vanderbilts. Uh, Caroline Astor essentially controlled New York society at the time, had created the meaning of American society, uh, and the Vanderbilts wanted into society. They were like the nouveau riche uh, family, uh, and Caroline Astor refused to admit them into society. But I, I find these, you know, we all hear the name Astor, we hear the name Vanderbilt, we hear the names of these quote unquote great families, mm -hmm. but the actual kind of lived experiences of the people in the families is really interesting to me, and how it's different from the inside looking out as it is from the outside looking in. I love how you open the book, Anderson, because you're 11 or 13 and you're meeting Brooke Astor for the first time you're with your mom, and you assume Brooke Astor, Gloria Vanderbilt, they must have been friends. Mm. Never assume, because you know what assume does, but I assume, <laughs> oh, they must be friends. And it was very clear your mom was not necessarily a fan. My mom was not a fan of Brooke Astor, that's yes. true. I, we, we met in a restaurant, I was like 13 years old. She was wearing and a big fur coat. She, yeah, my first thought upon meeting her, Brooke Astor, who at that point it was a you know legendary figure in New York, had given away tens of millions of dollars to charities in, in New York City that she had uh, inherited from her husband Vincent Astor, um, and she, I, my first thought was, who is this little lady in a big fur coat? This little old lady in a big fur coat, not knowing that fur was actually the way the Astors had initially created their fortune. Um, I, I didn't know that either, and that's why it comes full circle because. They started with beaver trapping, and even that didn't go well with the family. I mean, the more you read about this family, the more you read, these guys were a little shady. Can you, can you well, take you know, back I mean, to the fur trading? A lot of these fortunes, obviously, were built by a singular figure early on. In, in the Vanderbilts, it was Commodore Vanderbilt, who at 11, you know, started working on a, on a ship, uh, built an empire of steamships and an empire in railroads. John Jacob Astor's first fortune was made in beaver skins and beaver fur was incredibly valuable. It was uh, particularly in Europe. Big and business. He, he monopolized the beaver trade. He w went out into the wilderness, traded, mastered the trade, and then really did it in a ruthless way. I mean, he used alcohol as a method to get better deals with indigenous populations. Uh, the US government actually tried to stop the sale of alcohol to indigenous populations in trading posts. Astor stopped, basically stopped the American government from doing that. He was pretty ruthless. Even to his own traders, he yes. would kind of screw them over. They would have to buy all the beads and trinkets at exorbitant mm -hmm. prices, and then they had a motivation to be ruthless in their business practices. So and he then, plowed all that money into New York real estate, and they, the Astors owned much of the land that I mean, the, uh, time, around Times Square, uh, yeah. right where we're sitting. And, and their name is on so much still to this day, from yeah. the library to Astoria, Queens, yep. to other To Astoria. a subway station. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To, yeah. to Astor Place. Yeah. Right, um, if you go to the Astor Place subway station, there are still beavers and ceramic plates uh, on the walls, and that's in homage mm -hmm. to the Astor. So because uh, the money was made in such a ruthless fashion, it's so interesting when the Astors begin to establish themselves in New York society, they get to write the rules for society. Right. And I'm fascinated to read that one of them is that the, the, you need to be three generations removed from <laughs> yes. the person who yes. actually got dirty. From the unpleasant making of the money. Uh, <laughs> so John Jacob Astor had beaver blood all over his hands, so he would have not been you know, yeah. allowed into New York society. But yes, uh, Caroline Astor sets about this sort of redefining what American society is. And you're right, it's, you have to be three generations removed. So like Commodore Vanderbilt, again, was the uncouth guy who made all the money in shipping and then railroads. His, his child, couldn't be right. in New York society. It was his grandchildren, the grandchildren yeah. after that. Commodore, so he of the pork chops, right? Yes, the big, yes. they all. There were a lot of big pork pork chops yeah, back then. Popular. As you study your own family and write about more families that had family names that stood as strong as the buildings and monuments that their names were etched on, um, and then 
you realize the fall and the failures. Yeah. What's the common thread, uh, the conclusion that you have come to yourself that you can relate to all of these falls? You know, uh, they, they, the Vanderbilts built all these huge palaces. Within 60 years, most of them were torn down because the tax laws changed. They were so top heavy to, to actually operate. You needed a staff of you know, 30 mm. or 40 people. Um, and so, A, don't, if you have money, don't build giant palaces to yourself. Mm. And if you think it's going to last forever, you should read these books, because it's not going to last forever. I know. You, you, what will you say to your own children? Because you come from a family yeah. of privilege. You were told at a very early... Were you thinking... Yeah, I was this? thinking exactly the same question, yeah. because this yes. is what he's saying. I, no, I'm yeah. fascinated by this topic. I mean, I, I, yeah, I grew up... Uh, my mom was Gloria Vanderbilt. She inherited money when she was turned 21. But you know, at she, an early age, you weren't getting that. Yeah, my mom spent all that money very effectively. And you wanted to work uh, from very fast. You wanted to make your own money. I, I, yeah, I, I knew early on, I looked at my mom's family, the little I knew of the Vanderbilts, I looked at my dad's uh, Mississippi upbringing on a farm during the yeah. Depression, and I, at an early age, knowing that there was no inheritance, I looked at my dad's family and thought, these are, this is the model I'm going to follow. I'm a Cooper, I'm going to follow this model of, like, working really hard. I felt like no good could come of focusing on the fantasy of this Vanderbilt thing but uh, now with your two sons, Anderson, what will you teach them? Are you thinking? I, you know, I, I want them to be their own people. And uh, I'm, I want, I wrote Vanderbilt because I wanted them to know. Uh, yeah, Sebastian they are. White. There's you and yeah. Ben and White and Sebastian. <laughs> I wanted the, them to see the Vanderbilts as I sort of see them and understand why there aren't, isn't this pot of gold and, uh, and the importance of, of figuring out your own way and hmm. the importance of, of being your own person. Anderson Cooper, we love when you're here. I especially love that you're yes. here because you're my mentor and I have a career yes. in news because of you. And so anytime I get to sit next to you. And now you followed me into fatherhood, which I love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Following in your footsteps, AC. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Anderson. Love you. Uh, Astro goes on sale tomorrow.